a big deal or nothing, all right? We're just going to laugh at some alien fellers, <laughs> some people talking about aliens. Were they in the CIA? Do they know karate? It doesn't matter, right? I just want to laugh at some tarts. This is about an hour long. We're going we're gonna to start, guys, right now. There he is. He looks great. I guess I can leave this on top of there, huh? Yeah. Man, being a lion bag of shit must really take it out of you. These are my notes. I got four. It's a lot of drawings of dog houses and happy sons. Cars are here. And we're sure as hell. Have not some funions, guys. Shit's gonna get dank. As I was working my way up the stairs back here, it dawned on me that <laughs> I don't you know, know if this is going to be good. on this planet can sometimes be a royal pain in the ass. Wake up, Robert, please. This looks like one of those dudes who kills his wife for her, her life insurance. I keep thinking <laughs> they're going to call me back to the factory for some retooling. And like some major hair. parts replacement. He should do that, the bangs, Puffy. <laughs> he should have Puffy bangs. You got your tinfoil ready? And I've prepared a list of the major parts I want replaced. Is Pecker? And there's an old friend in the audience, and I know damn well what he's thinking. And yes, that is at the top of my list. I think he means his butthole. <laughs> it's blown out. It's old and blown out. I really don't know where to begin, honestly. I, I just must say a few words here, beginning. <laughs> he wastes his wife by switching to Geico? Why I... Hey, I'm wait a here. second. Why isn't my chat, my Bob, showing up? You guys should be on the screen. What's going on here? There you go. This thing is so finicky. Why can't shit just work? Sorry, guys. Here. Because I... Uh, <laughs> yes. That's where the tarred bunker is. I went into seclusion. For a time, five and a half. He was right there, guys. A half years ago, I spoke at the Bay Area Conference in San Jose. In space? That looks like space to me. And I said at that time that that pres presentation was my my last and final <laughs> public presentation. The last time I would spout my horse. And shit. I want you to understand why I did that. I was so fed up with so much that had happened over the years. I'm afraid I had learned too much. This is going great. I'm afraid I had learned too much. <laughs> he knows too much, hell mama. He's gotta be a black man. I had seen too much. <laughs> I know too much, guys. Do you know how many bitches he probably picked up in the 70s telling his alien horse shit? Man, it must have been a, a parade of, of horse. Boomer bitches always fall for that stuff. A week from tomorrow, I celebrate 80 years. He's already dead, by the way. He's already dead, so don't feel bad. And I have been prone to whine and complain and grumble and carry on a few times, you know. Because the years take their toll. Not on that hair. And every time I start whining and complaining, I look at Wendell Stevens, who celebrated 86 last month. All right, old dude, get to the aliens. So when I see Wendell... <laughs> yeah, the 70s were crazy. Around, pretty, pretty vigorous old coot. I shut up because, you know... Especially when your career is telling horseshit. I'm going to be around another six... But I take my hat off to Wendell. Not only is he a dear friend, but he's a bit of a hero in my book. A snatch of terror. But I wanted you to know why I became a recluse for some time. I uh, spoke at San Jose and I said, I'm out of here. Because every time he started speaking, people would just yell horse shit. I'm not doing this anymore. As I said, I'd seen too much, been too many places, had learned too much. And I'll be honest with you by telling you that some of the things I had learned uh -oh. brought my old world view crumbling around my knees. You talk about <laughs> well. the old paradigm.
He's like, man, back then, the bitches would buy anything. I told him I fought reptilians in my Mars. I killed so many reptilians in Mars. And the idea that many people aren't ready for the new paradigm? Well, I wasn't ready when I first began this thing over 40 years ago. I was serving in Europe at the time, shape headquarters in Paris. And I got introduced to the reality of the phenomenon. And I, uh, from that moment on, I could never put it down. I could never step away from it. The more I learned, the more I wanted to know, and the more I ended up knowing, the more shocked I became. And well, I well, well, tell us what you know, shithead. Collapsed. You talk about the word alienated. I was alienated completely. Fucking Palladians. Because my old concepts were just down the toilet. I wish he would poof out those banks. It's ruining it. And I walked away. Went back to Phoenix. <laughs> turned myself into a <laughs> recluse. Right. And as my son said, I was proceeding to commit suicide slowly. So many aliens. I can't take it. Smoked too many big cigars. Drank too much good bourbon. Drank too much strong coffee. As I said, I'm a, I'm a heavy drug user, you know. Pounded so many Martians. Really? Nicotine, caffeine, and alcohol. Probably one of the things keeping me here. And well, uh, I began to stew in my own juices, as it were. <laughs> and a number of He means he was happy diapering. Things began to happen. I began to do some very serious <laughs> meditation. <laughs> It does have a very nice haircut. And under the suggestions and encouragement from a bunch, bunch of people like Joe McMonigle. Oh, that's great. Who's another great. retired army man. The great Joe McGonigle. I began do, doing some remote viewing. <laughs> always, always with the psychic stuff. Now this guy's a psychic. And let me tell you, if you think that will not blow your old paradigm. If I could remote view, I'd always see what the neighbors were doing. <laughs> I wonder what those assholes are doing right now. You give it a try. I've even had a couple of out-of-body experiences. I call them excursions. Yeah, too many insurers. And that'll shake you up. There's not a one of you in this audience that can't do that. Thanks, Each bro. and every one of you have that capability to remote view. Just don't ask me Each how. Each and every one of you has the capability to step outside of your shell, which is what this is. No, that's a sweet and jacket and turtleneck. Travel out there. I mean, there are no limits. Check it out, locker rooms. You can go everywhere in this God's universe. And so a few things happened, transpired. I began to learn a little more. And then Ursula another, still ass blasted about that. Another couple of things happened. I, I came here a year ago, just as a guest, just to came and look how, see how things were going. And a number of old friends came up to me and said, listen, you really got to get over this reclusion, seclusion thing. Yeah, stop being a whiny bitch. And start talking to people again. And then I got a phone call. <laughs> from a senior naval officer in the Pentagon. He asked me if I was interested in long-distance savings. And this senior naval officer called me up and said to me rather bluntly, Listen, you old fart. Get off your dead ass and get out there and start talking again about what you've learned. You think that actually happened? Do you think a na whatever some military officer called him, some top-ranking military official called this guy and said, hey, you got to start spouting your horse shit again? Well, needless to say, I was a little bit taken back by this. I mean, uh, <clears throat> it was unseemly. I'm a senior citizen. I didn't figure I deserved that kind of commentary. I was taken aback <clears throat> momentarily. Because you see, this phone call from this senior naval officer in the Pentagon was from my son. <laughs> <clears throat> Whoa. His kid? And he's had the privilege over the years to call me an old fart and get away with it. His kid just likes to make fun of him with his and, friends. Uh, 
Last year, a couple of the old boys and the old boys. All right, like enough. Get Ware, to the aliens. Two guys I deeply admire and respect. Where's the aliens? Told me the same thing, you know. Stop sitting there stewing in my own juice. Come out here and talk. And share with people. It's you've been 10 minutes. things, you've learned things that need to be told. And I haven't heard jack shit about reptilians. And so a combination of all these things, the remote viewing, the out-of-body experiences, the blunt phone call from my kid, I'm here. And I'm going to stay out here in the public again as long as I'm around. <laughs> he needs a bun. A bun would look great Thank on this guy. Much. I've also had some encouragement from a couple of friends. Cool, dude. Aliens I jokingly now. jokingly refer to friends in high places. You're not interesting. Aliens. Well, let me try to get here. I was in the gentleman's lounge just before I came up here. Staring at the horse. I had horse. a flash of illumination. Now, a lot of people have those flashes of illumination while they're in the shower, you know? When the old dude pills kick in. I tend to have them when I visit the gentleman's lounge. I think it's the sound of running water that does it. You know? <laughs> and at my age, I make a number of trips to the gentleman's lounge. Oh, he was shitting. Now I get lounge. it. It was you would shitting. think I might be the, one of the most enlightened, illuminated <laughs> people on the planet. He likes his shit. But essentially, my illumination was this. What the hell are we doing here? Why do we come here every February? Why do we go up to San Jose at the Bay Area Conference every September? To learn about aliens. Why do we even bother doing what we do? And it's it, aliens. It's because you people will buy know. any horse shit I say. <laughs> I could say I have three penises and you all would not in agreement. How important this is. It's you people that in my heart and you my lovable idiots are the most important parts of this whole program. <laughs> prostate problems. Every one of you. We come because we know that we're dealing with... This prostate is the size of his dome. ...this story in human history. I kid you not, it is <laughs> simply the greatest story in human history. It's about us, the human race, this human species that we're all a part of. How did we come to be here? Where are we from? Why are we here? New Jersey? And where are we going? That's going Hopefully to not back to New Jersey. Important. And we are at a transition moment in time. Aliens! We are making a transition, and I call it a transcendent transformation into another species. And it's happening right this moment as you sit here in the audience. You're changing right in front of all of us. You're changing in every way. Your genetics, your genes are changing. This video is called U.S. Government Disclosure. So far, we're 13 minutes in and not, not You're one not the same ounce of alien you talk. Were five years ago or 10 years ago. It's a transformation that's underway, and when it's finished, if it ever finishes, which I doubt, you're going to be almost like gods because oh. you have that potential. Long ago, an old friend of mine who I... <laughs> We're going to be God's guys. Continually ...as a dear old friend, a rabbi in Galilee said, you are as gods. What I do, you can do, and even more. Whoa. Well, think, t take those words and put them in your heart and think about that. You are as gods. What he did, you If I was a god, I would make never-ending Mountain Dew. Just a bottle that never empties. Do ...and even more. Be awesome. You're not there yet, but you're getting there. And this process is underway, and it cannot be stopped. It's fate. It's destiny. <laughs> you're turning into a new species in that transcendent transformation. Oh. That's why I love to look at the young people like today. You know, you, you talk he about He didn't turn into a god. He done did died it a few years back. You look deep into their eyes, and you see things. You, you see a depth of an understanding and an insight in those little eyes today. They're the new world. And now he's on an offender's list. For it. You've laid the groundwork for that. But that's why we're here. 
All right, aliens. You know, here we you go. Get a little de depressed now and then. We all do. You know, I you turned down a guy to watch this guy, but the other guy I had lined up <laughs> said his life turned to shit after an anime convention, and I turned that down for this. Hey. Most of the world couldn't care less what the hell we're doing here. Most of the people in the United States haven't a clue and aren't interested, and that may be so. But for those who do have a clue and for those who are interested, it's important that we keep coming here and speaking, sharing with each other, and That's listening right. to each other. And just lying. And speaking about shit that's not real. Now I want to briefly touch upon something, which is kind of current. I want to give you the definition of a word. And uh -oh. bear with me. Here we go. Aliens time, guys. There's a word that's being bandied about by people. It's called apocalypse. Oh, the world's going to end. And I, I hate the misuse of that damned word. Language, it's sir. being used by a lot of people in different religious organizations. They call the this is four horses. This is from like 2013. Of the apocalypse. You know, I mean, he died shortly war, after this. Famine and plague and pestilence. Oh, we're in the end days. Oh God, we're we're doomed. Well, hell yes, we're doomed. Oh, There's shit. not a one of you in this audience is going to be here a hundred years from now. Everybody That's really who wrong, died though. today on this planet. Their world came to an end. But that's not what the word apocalypse means. What does it mean? The word simply means the revealing, the uncovering, oh, shit. and the disclosure. Finally, aliens. And you're smack ass in the middle of all of that. You're in the middle of a process of revealing and uncovering and disclosure. Well, who knows? It might be way earlier than that. That's when it was uploaded. It's happening every day for those of you who pay attention. Now, again, the old, my old friend from Galilee said at one time, for those of you who have eyes to see, let him see. <laughs> These guys are geniuses. They just don't say anything. This guy hasn't said anything. For those of you who have ears to hear, Aliens. let him hear. And I would like to add one more thing. To, to that. How long could he deflect? For those of you who have a mind to think with, for God's sake, think. That's what's the most important part yeah. of it. Yeah, I think this is bullshit. You he hasn't said eyes, anything. You're paying attention. You're listening. You're using your God-given mind to think. And let me tell you, there's a difference between mind and brain. You're not even in the CIA, dude. Your brain will die when you do, when the body dies. Your mind will not die because your mind is a portion of your soul, which is immortal. Where's the aliens? And if you want me to say that again, when you step out of your body, <laughs> you do your remote viewing, you have an out-of-body These guys, experience. Th these carnies, they're fucking brilliant, dude. Brilliant. Just say nothing and just take the paycheck. One oh, yeah, aliens. I know all about that. And just tell stories when you were like a, a young feller. I'm still here. And just clean yes, up. I have learned in the last five years <laughs> the reality of the... You better take a cave squeaker. You better take a picture of yourself in a karate uniform. The mortality of the human soul. And if you don't oh, that's that rich, dude. Outside, that is rich. Any of you may be way ahead of me on that. But what the thing I've learned, I guess, the most powerful thing is that there is a God. But what about aliens? That's great and all, but I want aliens. Don't you it's called it? UFO Congress. <laughs> it's not called God Congress. I learned out that there is a supreme being. Hanford? And you're all a part of that. Because there is a spark of that divinity yeah, you said, and you said this, dude. in every one of you. We've been through this. It's known as your soul, your immortal soul. <laughs> now, I didn't come up here to make a, a sermon. Yeah, I alien time. Not much to cover here. Uh, oh, I uh, wanted to talk to you briefly about there. We talk about the four horsemen of the apocalypse. But there's a fifth one. Hell, they've been writing since the beginning of human history. 
war, famine, plague, pestilence. What's new? Well, we've got three new horses. There are not four. <laughs> I knew there we are would six. do some gay shit like that. Well, we got more horses, Seven guys. Seven horses in the apocalypse. Ah, there's a self. There's a horse named selfishness and greed. I'm looking at you, Hanford. It's riding out of a stables on Wall Street. <laughs> yeah, and take that's a that. Damn dangerous horse. Take that, idiots on Wall Street. Street. There's another horse that's riding in the apocalypse, and that is known as religious intolerance. Oh. And that, that horse is You like hear that, anti-Semites? <laughs> hmm? Being out of different places, Rome, Mecca, New York, Washington, wherever. No, the, the, the third horse is just called Fluffy, and it's just a regular horse that just likes to prance around the fields. And that's a dangerous one. <laughs> and then the last of the seven horses that I refer to is a horse known as scientific materialism. Whoa. And that horse rides out of places like Princeton, Harvard, Yale, San, you know, all over the damn place. Scientific materialism has set the human soul and its development and its growth back more than almost any of the others. I, I wish he was talking about UFOs. You've got these guys who haven't the slightest idea that there is a spiritual component to the human being. See, you got to think of these guys. You don't know what he's getting at. He doesn't either. It's, it's a con game. <laughs> these guys are brilliant at it. Well, I mean, we could see his horse shit, but like the rubes, especially boomers, they think he's being <laughs> mysterious and shadowy, and they love it. That's why Q is so big. He will say absolutely nothing and back it up with nothing. <laughs> nothing backed by nothing. And they won't mention it. They won't accept it. They won't agree to He's it. He's a carny. Because they can't measure it and weigh it in their laboratories. And boy, are they in for a surprise in this next few short years. Cobes would actually give you some information, I think. Oh, no. Let's see. Where were we? Oh, I wanted to talk about disclosure. One of those portions <laughs> Finally. of the, uh, the apocalypse. There are two men. I, I, I have a great respect and admiration for Stephen Greer. Oh, that's another and bullshit I have artist. Respect and <laughs> Why I love these? I don't know if anyone remembers, but back a long time ago, Google Video, before Google bought YouTube, there was this thing called Google Video. And it, they were packed full of these. Like, I'm sure most of them are gone, like just deleted and gone forever. But they were packed with so much <laughs> bullshit artists. I would just watch them every night and laugh my ass off. For a guy named. Stephen Bassett, who've been pr promoting disclosure for some time. And, and bless their hearts, both of them have been saying, oh, any minute now, any minute now, next week, oh, <laughs> you new administration. You know, we'll get a new president in, uh, Podesta, Panata, some of the guys who worked for Slick Willie some years back are Baby now in place, creep. and we're going to have disclosure next week. Listen. I've been involved in this whole thing for 40 years. And I've been what, a, deeply what a wasted life. You know, the guy with a hot dog cart had a way more fulfilling life than this guy. Involved in it for the last 20. And let me tell you, take it for what it's worth, in my view, there ain't going to be no disclosure. Not like they expect. Oh, they shit. expect the government to someday have a news conference and stand up and say, hey, we got a little surprise for you. Guess that ain't what? happening. We've been keeping it from you. Because we're sorry about that, but uh, it was for your own good, you know. You guys weren't ready for this. You probably couldn't handle it. So, but now we're going to tell you. Oh yes, uh, aliens are here. They've been here for quite a while. Oh, they're all over the place. <laughs> all right, well, say some alien stuff. All over the damn place. But you're I not. passed up a guy who said he had shit on the moon. I'm going to get a government disclosure because that's not how government works. First of all, they're a bunch of nitwits in some cases. They're not capable of giving you a disclosure and doing it in a sensible, thoughtful, caring way. I want disclosure. For a lot of reasons. One of the reasons is that they don't want to admit to you they've been lying to you for over 60 years. And then the other thing is that they are really a little bit uncertain and frightened themselves because the you, truth of their awareness and what they know 
still has them in a state of shock. Because they can't right. come out and tell you what it's we'll never like know my the analogy truth. of the Pandora's box. You don't open it just a little bit. You just lift the lid just a tiny bit and boom, everything comes out. Well, when everything comes out, it's going to blow the lid off of everything because this is the biggest damn story in human history. I hope and they paid this guy off in Larson hot dogs. He doesn't deserve more than two Larson hot dogs. It's simply this. You're not alone and you have never been alone. Prove it. And you have had, as I have learned over the years, an intimate interrelationship with advanced extraterrestrial intelligence from the beginning of human history. And one of the big secrets is that they don't want to even get close to is that your very existence. <laughs> it's just, it, it's not telling us anything. You're right. Was initiated and orchestrated you by are an wasting advanced our time, extraterrestrial dude. intelligence. <coughs> Now, how the hell are they going to tell you all of that? Ain't going to happen. I hate to tell Stephen and Stephen that, you know, I, I love, love you guys, but forget it. It ain't happening. Now, let me Aliens. tell you what is happening. Here we go. Aliens. Disclosure has been taking place. Oh, shit. It's known as controlled leakage. <laughs> he means this asshole. <laughs> There's a problem with controlled leakage. Funny term. It's, so, it's amazing there's not puddles on the floor here. Yeah. Because From your ass. this conference, there's a lot of real leaking going on at this <coughs> conference. And so many there, CIA there, agents. There is a stain there. Somebody's been leaking already. It's been underway for some time, and I'm going to tell you, it is what is known among the, the experts back there, wherever Control the hell stickies. back there is. It's a form of subliminal education. Yeah. Now, there's not a one of you who is not aware of that, I'm sure. One of the great leakers of all time is another Stephen, not uh, Bassett oh. and not Greer. Who is it? A Hollywood producer by the name of Spielberg. Oh, shit! Who has had some major contributions in this leaking going on over the years. He made a movie called E.T., which was primarily for the kids. He made Aliens. another movie called Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Which that was the most boring movie ever, too, by the way. It was you can never sit through that movie. on you big kids. He also made a TV series. Yeah, he didn't even bring any roasters. If he brought some roasters, it'd be a different story. Which I hope all of you saw, and they ought to release it again, called Take It. Now that's leakage in a big way. <clears throat> that's subliminal education in a big way. And Spielberg's not the only one. It's going on all the time, <clears throat> subtly, gently. The whole point of it is to be subtle, undercover, a subliminal. I was honored a number <laughs> The rest of the time he's just gonna be talking about the Holocaust. Years ago to be a speaker. <laughs> Remember the Holocaust? The Mensa Regional Conference in uh, Orange County, Southern California. Which he was a member of, the Mensa thing. <laughs> and I was honored being invited to speak. You were not. You were not invited, you lying fuck. Mensa Conference. I used to belong to the organization, but I... <laughs> he was a being Mensa, guys. Gotten away from You know, me. you got to prove that. You can't just say that shit. I, it, it was too much like tooting your own horn. Anyhow, one of the speakers, the guest of honor at this Mensa conference, was a guy by the name of Chris Carter. And as you may remember, Chris was the producer of The X-Files, which I think ran, what, eight years? Sometime, a very popular show. People sort of knowingly grabbed at something like The X-Files because they knew they were going to get some, some pretty good stuff there. They, Cyrax script. was the special speaker at Menza that year. Poop, as we used to say in the Army. And I talk, talked to Carter. I got him aside. We were having drinks. And I said, Chris, fess up to me. You, uh, <laughs> you saw them there? Some of the shows you guys put on, 
amaze me because, I, you know, I've been in the government for years. I spent 30 years almost in the Army, another 14 years working with FEMA. Special I Forces. I top secret clearance most all of my career. All these guys have top secret clearances, every single one. What are they just hand? Like, can you just, like, turn in cereal boxes for uh, clearance? Careers. <laughs> I've been in high shit. places and I've learned things. So much of the I ate stuff, a lot of Jimmy Dean sausage, guys. Stuff that you guys are showing on the X Files is right out of the, the playbook. Now, where the hell are you getting this information? The X Files. Who's feeding this to you? Now, you know, a lot of your shows aren't worth a damn. Some of them I can't put. You know. But there are. His few. favorite show is One Day at a Time. In this, <laughs> it is close to aliens and one day at a time. Watch it, really watch it. X Files series that they ran for some years that are right on. And he got a, got a big grin on his face and he looked around and he says, You ain't seen nothing yet. And he said, Yes, we've been getting some storylines from a few people. <laughs> That's what I mean. They, they must just give them out like candy. Like I said, he handed in three cereal box tops and they gave him top secret clearance. Go into it, who they are and where they're from. But yes, uh, my writers have been uh, encouraged and assisted over the years with some storylines. And he says, we've been most gratified at the people's response to these storylines. And there was yeah, one- Yeah, but I think these guys think it's a bigger, because these guys are just liars, right? <laughs> like, this guy's never had clearance to anything. <laughs> in particular that I nailed him with and I said you know that event happened I happen to know the guys who were there it involved Mulder cutting the wire of an Air Force base somewhere in California fucking Mulder sneaking into this Air Force base that was based off his life and he gets no more than 30 40 paces and then this triangular object comes down the runway off the ground 40, 50 feet up, pulls over, hovers over Mulder, and beams a spotlight on him. And then he hears the sirens, and then the, this bunch of... Yeah, but do you understand what I'm saying? They're saying top secret clearance like it's a big deal. <laughs> and you guys are saying it's not a big deal, which I believe you, but he's trying to tr win over the fucking roofs. Police come out on the thing, and they grasp him and grapple him to the ground and haul him off into the... Uh, inner sanctum somewhere and then somebody <laughs> sticks and sticks a needle into him and Mulder becomes you know oh it's a delightful program and they, it's a delightful program finally release him and when uh, <laughs> the only mind? thing he got on clearance last was last week's chicken cutlets <laughs> he looks like he would enjoy some weak old chicken cutlets Scully thank you when Scully finally gets Mulder back he He's all groggy, and he, he really can't remember too clearly what's happened, where he's been, and what happened. Well, that whole damn Remember on what's happening when Rerun had to, had to bootleg a, a, a concert, and he got arrested, and Raj had to come get him? ...event actually took place. And so help me, you see it on the X-Files, and I nailed him with that. And as I said, he was subtle. He, he, he had a big grin. He, he likes TV, what I guys. Was talking about. He likes to watch his stories. And uh, he said, all they said, he said, yeah, you ain't seen nothing. <laughs> yeah, because they don't know. They're Stay idiots. Tuned. Exactly. And I think the X-Files went on for another two or three years after that. And I enjoy the show. As I said, some other programs it's a fine not program. that good. But some of them were right on. And it's part of this leakage, this... Um, Stop saying leakage. Subtle subliminal education well the people in this room in my view are about 10 miles ahead of most everybody else out there yeah this but is this is the worst one like i've watched a lot of these and this is the worst one as carter told me stay tuned you ain't seen nothing yet so pay attention i'm sure most of you do or you wouldn't be here he's right you're getting this information slowly carefully Subtly, subliminally. So we learned so far X Files. 
pronounce that. We learned that X Files. We're, we're 31 minutes in, and we learned that X Files was in fact a TV show. I got some water here. <clears throat> Every time I talk about sensitive material, I get <clears throat> my mouth comes a little bit dry. Sensitive? You haven't said anything. <laughs> we have, because nothing. I plan to uh, share with you this afternoon, in the time we have, a couple of things that are rather sensitive. His prostate. <laughs> His prostate's very sensitive. Okay. Let's just jump around a bit. An event took place in California in 1954. Uh-oh. Now we're getting somewhere. At an somewhere. Air Force base known as Morocco. Oh, shit. This event had been planned and orchestrated <clears throat> by sensitive military, primarily naval. He means uh, the belly button. Individuals. And what it was essentially is that Eisenhower got aboard his plane went out to this Murak Air Force Base. And what happened? With a whole passel of guys from his administration. I'm on the edge of my seat. And including the Archbishop or Cardinal or Bishop of Los Angeles, a guy by the name of McIntyre. What happened? And this thing had been orchestrated and organized for some time because there had been communications between individuals in naval intelligence and I say naval, and I say this again and again and again. Do you I have shoulder pads? As a Are you wearing shoulder pads? <laughs> an officer from the Navy just in November. The Navy has been up to here in this whole program from the very beginning, and they actually run the operation over at Groom Lake. Okay, what happened? What, what happened? 51, which you've all heard about. We'll see you more about here. There's more leakage going on tomorrow, believe me. And there are some big leakers coming here. <laughs> Pay attention. No. Anyhow, this event took place. He's a fancy man. Uh, I've had verification and, and proof that it actually transpired from sources that, impeccable. <laughs> the flu Ike out there, supposedly he was... <laughs> the, sor the impeccable source was a bathroom wall. Visiting a dentist, he had a problem. I learned about disclosure from a bathroom stall at Arby's. Well, bless his heart, he really did have a problem. When this was over, he ended up having a coronary. That impact upon him was so powerful that he ended up having a heart attack. Wait, what, what, what are we talking about now? I thought we were in the 50s. Anyhow, what transpired in April of 1954? Yeah, back, back on topic. A group of others, I hate the word alien. I don't even like the word ETs. <laughs> But whatever term you care to use, they came in. Assholes. There were three ships. They were golden in color. They were discs, primarily, circular discs, but they were fat discs. They had a, a high dome you on the top fat and dick, they had man. a big dome on the bottom. And these golden metallic discs came in, three of them, and they yes. circled over the runway. Okay, then what? Made Get to the point. Passes. And Ike and this whole crowd are standing there with, you know, mouths dropping open. We had some generals, we had some admirals, and we had a couple of church authorities. <laughs> this there. guy's going to stretch this story. <laughs> I'm going to be 80 when he finally finishes this fucking story. Poor old Ike. And these guys circled around for a time. <laughs> And then one of the ships came in and landed on the tarmac right in front of the hangar where the receiving party, the welcoming party, was located. And they had cameras set up. There were at least four, maybe five cameras. Where can we see this film? film? All of the sounds, they picked up every word that was said. One of the ships come over and lands right in front of the hangar. The other two ships stayed hovering over the runway during the entire process. The story is like the aliens opened their mouths. They said, Hey, where are the white women at? <laughs> Heard from people I trust in that the whole thing went three days. There was a lot of exchange. And your country hasn't been the same since. 
He's right. You talk about black government, shadow government. <clears throat> Ladies and Fudge, gentlemen, yeah. you have no idea how damn black it is. <laughs> the government you think you've got is not the government you've got. What government, government is you it? think you had. The government that Washington, Jefferson, Adams, Hamilton. Yeah, this is the guy who said he got into the negative world in Super Mario Brothers when you were a little kid. This is that guy. And all the rest of those guys. Created 200 years ago is not the government you've got today. You do not have a democratic republic, good people, and I'm sorry to have to tell you that. Your democratic republic ceased to exist. I think the last chink in the thing was probably in 1913. Don't, don't refer to Hanford as that. <laughs> it's feelings. When they created that financial nightmare that they created. They created a financial what? nightmare in 19... Natives are restless. In 13. It's caused, I think, contributed in great extent... So back to 1950. The problem we find ourselves economically in today. And then the alien said what? The Federal Reserve was created at midnight. We were just in the 50s. You can't go back to the Federal Reserve. <laughs> you can't go to the Federal Reserve. We know about the Federal Reserve. In what, Congress, what are you clapping for? A couple of days before Christmas <laughs> in 1913. Yes, and 1913. Beautiful. The creature from public. Jekyll Island and all that horse shit. We got it. Next. Breathed its last. That was the beginning of. <laughs> How do we get the to 1913? Last gasps of your republic took place in 1947. Oh, oh, here we go. And if you think that wasn't a big year, you all know about Roswell. Well, let me tell you, Roswell was one little tiny event. For but God's there was sake, a there bigger were three event. Crashes in that area in New Mexico within 30 days. Roswell was only a tiny piece of it. There have been crashes going on all over the country and all around the world for the last 40 years, 60 years. He's right. We've been picking up bits and pieces of hardware <laughs> all over the damn planet. The nation, you mean, you mean the, the, the whole place is attended by the Foodie Federation? Now that I had believe. We retrieved a UFO out of the waters off San Diego in 1941. And if you talk about parts, well, we picked up bits and pieces. Ooh, and we loaded them up. We took them Man, this, here and we took them This guy's here. brilliant. How to just ramble for 40 minutes and say absolutely nothing. We took them at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. We've taken them at several places. And then, God bless them, we've taken the bodies and a couple of survivors off as well. Well, that's ancient history. But I'm saying, forgive me if I repeat myself. Your, your, your government that you thought you had yeah, yeah. ceased to exist in 19. Are you drunk? <laughs> <laughs> in 1947, I think someone spiked this guy's in share, dude. A year where we created the Central Intelligence Agency, we created the National Security Organization, and we also signed a pact called the Yukusa Pact. Oh, UK USA. <clears throat> What's that about? Now, this pact we signed in 1947 was not just an accident. At the end of World War II, the United Kingdom, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and the United States signed this pact, and we have been like this ever since. Okay, how do we get off but from the that? people in the United Kingdom? In how did we get here? <laughs> yeah, right. How did we get here? How did we get to the Yakuza Pact? Wales, Scotland, Ireland. <laughs> they don't know any more about it in in reality than most people out there do. Because one of the things about the Yukusa Pact was the lid came down on all the secrets, particularly the secrets of their reality. And if you check the comments for this video, it's all like, man, this guy knew what he was talking about. I, don't, I have no idea what he's talking and about. The lid has been down ever since. <clears throat> I have to laugh sometimes when I uh, hear Nick Pope speaking out. Uh, you, many of you know who Nick Pope is. Who the He's fuck is that? Young man. He's a bright young man. He uh, worked for the uh, Ministry of Defense in Britain for a number of years. And he had the UFO desk. And Nick is a lot like some of our people. They sit at the desk and they see a little bit. 
I have no idea what he's saying. This is horrible. Okay, I don't see. <laughs> I'm gonna have to because preview most these. Most of it never got to Nick's desk. So when he tells you that everything's been released, <clears throat> we're releasing it all over the place. Oh yeah, France has been releasing their classified material. The United Kingdom has been releasing their classified material, and you the have U.S. has begun releasing little bits and pieces of it. If you think they're releasing anything of real importance, you're an idiot. It. The stuff that they're releasing is garbage. <clears throat> well, could you tell us what they're releasing? <laughs> could you tell us anything? <laughs> People paid Next for this. Me, wherever you are at this moment, I'm not putting you down. <laughs> Most of the stuff they're releasing is garbage. The only bit of information that came out of France recently that was of any information oh, or of any value was here the report they called the Cometa Report. And many of you, I'm sure, are familiar with that. I have no idea what that uh, is. A number of retired... Just, just say things, and I'm like, oh, I'm sure you guys know about that and move on. French admirals and generals and scientists got together and put together a 30 or 40 page document called the Cometa Report. Okay. About what they considered to be the reality of the... Uh, the extraterrestrial presence, which is a term I like to repeat from time to time, uh, the UFO matter, and the Cometa report said essentially that, damn it, we're not being told the truth, and we think it's time for everybody to fess up and get this information out. Yeah, truthy and time. And the French were really ticked because, you know, they, they've had a shit chip on their shoulder from the very beginning that they've never really been shared with by the United <laughs> Kingdom and the United States. That was one of the big problems when I was in Paris in 1964, 63 to 67. <laughs> God, this old guy sucks. threw us out. Yeah, he exactly. From the military alliance. Oh yeah, you know the <laughs> the report. You idiots know about that. Which I was a part of. Only an idiot wouldn't know about that. that time. He stayed a member of NATO, but he withdrew from the alliance because. He was pissed off because the British and the Americans had not taken him into their confidence and shared with him. <laughs> the Larson hot dog incident? I well, please Admirals tell me more. The even today are angry because the United Kingdom and the... You know what, guys? I picked this because his name was Robert Dean, and I never met anybody with Dean in their name who wasn't a total fucking retard. <laughs> it's true. Anybody, first name, last name, it doesn't matter. Americans if you got Dean in your name, you're probably a tart. And there are a lot of reasons for that. Because when I was there in Paris in 1963 to 67, there was a major <laughs> French firing going on at the time where everything that Washington and London right. would send to us at Shape headquarters went immediately to Moscow. What? <clears throat> so Washington was not sending anything to Shape headquarters about the UFO matter. How did we get here? These things were flying all over Central Europe back then. Gordon Cooper admitted to me, he said, you know, I was flying jet fighters over Europe in the 50s. Yeah, me too. They were all over the damn place. We wondered then what they were all about. Who? Well, bless his heart, Gordon now knows the answer. Oh, yeah, but that's not spelled D-E-A-N. Wait, I was rambling, excuse me. Yeah. You're talking about disclosure. Yeah, next. There are lots of different things that have been happening. All right. Let me get to some. Oh, of guys, here. he's rifling through the notes. So is this going to be some festive crayon drawings or some hard hitting alien trufuses? One of the things that ticked me off the most is a little Finally. document known as executive order. I have in my fingers. I sound like one of those guys on TV. I have in my greasy fingers here an executive he order. Oh, uh, what does it say? A copy of it. This was signed by Slick Willie. Fuck oh, Slick excuse Willie. me, President Clinton. Sick, Slick Willie signed this on September the 29th, 1995. <laughs> an executive <laughs> order is, is something that you may not be aware of. We, we know what executive an order executive is. Executive order is probably the most powerful piece of paper there is in our government. All right, what does it say? A president sits down. It's printed on paper, and paper comes from trees. Oh, you don't believe me? Well, you're going to have to do your research. Comes up with an idea. He has something he wants to do. He puts <laughs> it on paper. He signs it. 
that becomes law. Nobody in Congress we, has we understand. to talk about it. Nobody in Congress yes. is asked to see it. Yes. Nobody in Congress has to give approval to this. They don't even know what has to done, done did existed. Because when the president signs it, it becomes law. All right, you said this. Now that in itself. Man, this motherfucker could stretch an hour, huh? <laughs> this guy should take this shit on the road. Good God, Washington, Jefferson, Hamilton. Those guys are spinning in their graves, I think. The fact that we've reached this point where an uh, imperial president can sit in his office at 1600 <laughs> Pennsylvania Avenue. Yes, we know where he's at. <laughs> Fuck, man. And sign an executive order which becomes the law of the land, and you cannot argue with it. <laughs> this particular one that Clinton signed in September of 95. All right, what does it say? Wiped away every rule in the Environmental Protection Act. What does that got to do with anything? There were a bunch of guys... What does that have to do with aliens? <laughs> you boring old cocksucker. Over here, not too far away, at Groom Lake, Site 51, who were dying horrible deaths because they had been exposed to something, smoke, chemical, whatever, what? during, the, during their job. What is that connected to? And these guys, the flesh was falling off their bodies. Their skin was <laughs> rupturing. The flesh was falling. They were in incredible pain. And they were dying. Man, this guy's huckster supreme. And you said nothing. And some attorneys tried to find out what it was that was causing this. If the doctors could find out what was causing it, they could possibly help those guys deal with this and they could come up with some way of treating them. Well, I'm sorry. Not, I'm sorry, guys. I thought this would be way more interesting. Next Monday, we'll do a better one. Only did the government deny the request for information on what that material was that was killing these guys. Those bastards in Washington even denied Worsh. the damn facility didn't even exist. And this is after the Soviets had taken photographs <laughs> from orbit. Ooh. Well, it's amazing. You know what it is? It's interesting to watch them work like because people would line up to watch these fucking things back in the 90s or early 2000s. The existence of Groom Lake and Site 51. He says and stuff everybody knows. Everyone knows about fucking Groom Lake. The Everyone Soviets knows about good enough to let us Roswell. have photographs of the damn place. And yet your government in Washington says, oh, that that doesn't exist. That place, that place doesn't exist. No. And they wouldn't share any information. In those Everyone guys. knew it existed by 2009. Everyone knows Area 51 is real. Continued to die. I don't know how many of them passed away. Uh, I've lost track of it over the years. But I want you to know something about your government. Or what the government you think you've got. Yeah, you just got to take pictures of yourself in a karate suit. There's another tiny tidbit here. Ah, uh, here we, we go. A stack of tidbits. I this hope. is going to be good. Here we go. Finally, I'll share it with you. Hard truths coming out. How many out. of you are aware that your national? Uh, what do we call it here? <laughs> the National Patent Office. Here we go. Has a whole set of orders called secrecy orders. What does that you know, mean? Patents are guys that invent something. Scientists. We, got we know what patents are. You fuck. <laughs> Stop talking down to us. Everyone knows what a patent is. Some smart guys out there, they invent something. <laughs> you all probably know that we have had inventions that, oh God, you know, you know I, I tend to get angry here. <laughs> Every time I go to the filling station, I'm angry when I put gas The filling station. That's how you can tell that's an old dude. Hey, I got to go to the filling station. We've had free energy for over 40 years. But that's a separate story. I bet he calls his wallet a billfold. <laughs> I went to the filling station and I pulled a crisp $5 bill from my billfold. The National Patent Office, guys who invent something, come up with <laughs> bright ideas. <clears throat> you po poke it, start it, it creates power. It gets more power coming out than was put in. No. And it, it's impossible. Oh, my God, already? Oh, jeez. I'm sorry. It's, it's a problem I've had. 
as I said, I had this pile of stuff I wanted to share, and I just, I only got 15 time, 15 minutes. <laughs> so I wanted to throw this out. He's getting a pollard. He's getting the hook. To you, the last bit of information I have is in the year 2002. There were 4,792 patents that had a secrecy stamp placed okay. upon them where those patents could not be talked about. I mean, I don't know how we got to fucking patents, but okay. ...or developed because they involved national security. Okay, and what does that mean? That was in 19... 19- <laughs> Did you hear some guy goes, oh, in the crowd. Are you, are you following that? How could you even follow this? 2002, 4,792 secrecy oh, orders God. were in effect at the end of that year. There were 139 patent applications during the fiscal year 2002 where the secrecy order was placed on them and publication of their findings was denied. What? Why? National security. So, as I said, we've had free energy for years. What? <clears throat> How do we get to free energy? Let me tell you one other small thing. Please don't. A retired scientist by the name of David Froning. Oh, that guy. Who is alive and well and living outside of Flagstaff, Arizona today. Fifteen years ago, David Froning spoke at a conference, which I was part of. And he also bored everyone there to death. And Froning graduated or completed his, his career working for Lockheed Martin. This vast, this vast corporation that's, that's got their sticky fingers in so damn many things. <laughs> David told us at this conference 15 years ago that before he retired, <clears throat> Lockheed Martin All right, had, yes. Well, how the word he used. <laughs> this fucking guy. This guy is crazy. They had developed and were using hyperluminal flight. What does that even mean? And it took some of us a little bit of a side there, and I, you know, David, hyperluminal flight. What yeah, does that mean? He said, faster than light. Get out of here! <laughs> Someone should have grabbed him by the fucking back of his pants and just wedged him out the front door. <laughs> yeah, we fly faster than the speed of light. No, they've had no, it for don't. years. It doesn't even make sense. It's impossible. It? Well, he says, I want to say you, your government, but I can't say that with all honesty because he says it's, it's classified. <laughs> We've had hyperluminal flight no. for years, and you may know about it in another 20, 30 years when they fess up and tell you that what they can do and what they've accomplished and what they can do and what they have done. And then he said, yeah, I made a, a faster than light airplane and I've been flying them for 50 years. What now, jerk? Now, another little tiny tidbit. This was from David Froning, a respected man, a, a scientist who spent all those years. All right, here we go. Froning was involved with um, what he called modified field propulsion. A variable field <laughs> form of propulsion. They were dealing with matter antimatter conversion. They called it exotic right. field tension. Here we go. And he said flatly, it modifies time and space. I knew it. And it ends up we've got transluminar, luminal, hyperluminal flight. Just like in Star Trek, guys. Now, some years ago, a guy by the name of Ben Rich retired from Lockheed Martin. And in the end of his career, Ben ran the skunk works over there at Lockheed. <laughs> this guy's, none of these and, stories are connected. And there was a little jovial exchange between him and the guys in the audience out there. And Ben Rich said, you know, Here we, go. we can take E.T. home. I think the movie, was, the E.T. movie was out about that time. He says, we can take E.T. home. 
<laughs> the only thing he knows about aliens he's just seen in movies. And a few of the guys in the audience says, Ben, what the hell are you talking about? Oh, he said, let me tell you, we've got stuff you wouldn't believe. We can take extraterrestrial home. So they said, look, what the hell is all of that? A PlayStation 6, guys. That's he goes what they over got. to the blackboard and he writes, <laughs> unfunded opportunities. Okay. Well, the guys say, well, what the hell does that mean? Yeah. Man? Unfunded opportunities. I don't. <laughs> so he goes over with a. This guy. And then, and then you're like, yeah, that sounded good. And you're like, wait, what the Talking hell was that even about? The U and the F and the O. This term that he wrote on the blackboard was uh -oh. unfunded opportunities. And he, he circles the U of unfunded and the F in unfunded oh. and the O in opportunities. UFO. UFO. I figured out the code. And then he had a big grin on his face and he left the podium. That never happened, by the way. So we, we got these little bits and bits and pieces. You talk <laughs> about triple leakage. double, that's right. Leakage, oh, it's all over the place. Just one little other piece of leakage here. Many of you probably know this. Then why say Jeez, it? I got so much to share here. Oh. John Glenn, who you all know, I'm sure, know who he is. He appeared on the Frasier TV show. <laughs> <laughs> this guy loves TV. I love Frasier. The banter between the two brothers is to die for. One of my favorite shows. <laughs> of course. Some you years back, asshole. in March of 2001. Now, this, this was, I'm sure, planned and orchestrated. This was not an accident. Might be. In the process Might of be a that Frasier show, John Glenn said, Back in those glory days, I was very uncomfortable when they asked us to say things that we didn't want to say and deny other things. Uh -oh. Some people ask, you know, were you alone out there? We never gave the real answer. We've seen things out there, strange things, but we know what we saw out there and we couldn't really say anything about it. The bosses were scared of this. Oh, they were shit. afraid of the war of the worlds type stuff about panic in the streets. This was on Frasier? And so we had to keep quiet. And now we only see these things in our nightmares or maybe in the movies. And some of them are pretty close to being the truth. You talk about leakage. That was not an accident. That was on Frasier? Where would that come up? <laughs> leakage. That was a form of, what do they call it? <clears throat> Subtle. I have to admit, I've never seen one episode of Frasier. Uh, education. Anyhow, where the hell am I? Something else I had to get to. Important. <laughs> Mama's family. And then Bubba told Venton, there's aliens, Bubba, and Venton. There's aliens out there, Bubba. No, Venton. Yes, Bubba. There's aliens. Before he died... John Paul II was negotiating. Oh my. They tell me I have five minutes. That's I'm going right. To ask for maybe five more, maybe. If these people are available. I think, I think you found the connection. <laughs> like John Paul sure. II, before he died, was negotiating with the government of Iraq. There was a nitwit running the government of Iraq at that time by the name of Saddam Hussein. You may have heard of him. Well, the Vatican was negotiating with Saddam Hussein because they, the Pope, bless his heart. Well, speaking of mash, you know Hot Lips was an alien. He wanted to make a... Or at least she had so much plastic surgery she turned herself into an alien. ...pilgrimage to the holy city of Ur in Iraq. Now, there's nothing at Ur today but the ruins of a ziggurat. But it was one of the Who you call in a ziggurat? major cities of the old ancient Sumerian civilization that was established by the group we jokingly referred to. You're right, this guy, this guy is slap nuts of the week. ...as the Anunnaki. 
Here we now, go. Now, why was it that John Paul wanted to visit, make a pilgrimage to the holy city, holy city of Ur in Iraq? Ur. Well, it was because... See, you're on to something. Urkel was an alien. That city was called Ur. Where was Kel? I don't know. After but they're trying the to tell us something. In April of 1954, Cardinal McIntyre, once it was all over with, scurried off to New York. Also known as Reba McIntyre. Got himself aboard an airplane, flew off to the Vatican, and spilled the beans to the Pope. Beans were spilled. About what had transpired there at that Air Force base in the desert, California. And the Vatican, my friends, have been up to here <laughs> in this whole cover-up, in this whole matter, from the very beginning. Shit. As I jokingly refer, and I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings, if you might be Roman Catholic, I, I have respect for you. But there's a strange... It's a strange... But you're wrong and stupid. ...city. It's a national state of its own on the banks of the Tiber in Rome filled with old men wearing long dresses and funny hats. Some of my Catholic friends are going to get me for that. The Vatican has been up to its eyeballs in this whole cover-up from the very beginning. Of aliens? They have the, one of the finest national security intelligence operations on the planet. I mean, a retired Soviet KBG general. This guy's not even a good alien, dude. He would say that they have a, a, an observatory. Doesn't fucking, uh, um, what is it, the Vatican have some crazy observatory? The name of or something? Kalugin, who is now living in Washington, D.C., and he's an advisor. <laughs> You're correct, Gobo. <laughs> some of our people in government. Oleg Kalugin said, he said, Kalugin. if we had had the intelligence operations in the Soviet Union as good... Kalugin would be a great YouTube name. ...good as the one at the Vatican, the Cold War would still be going on. The Berlin Wall would have not fallen, and the Soviet Union would still exist. He says, we always knew that the best damn security intelligence operation on the planet was out of the Vatican. And probably the reason is that every damn priest in every country on the planet catholic priest i'm so turned around now i don't even know what the fuck he's talking about this guy just spins her it's it's is insane it, is in a sense an agent of the vatican intelligence <laughs> secret service and they're uh, deeply concerned about the location and the appearance in our solar system of a planet known as Nibiru. Oh, get out of which here with has this. already been photographed. No, it hasn't. That shit was supposed to hit us by 2012, and it never showed up. I have a picture of it here in a moment to share with you. Oh, we got a picture! The 10th planet has been photographed by uh, an astro... Fraser makes call sense. It, where the telescopes are? There it is. Well, anyhow. They've taken pictures of the day. Dude, that's dirt. just your asshole polyp. <laughs> that's just a polyp in your asshole. In southern Chile. Because it's, it has appeared below the ecliptic in the southern hemisphere. It's already been photographed by at least three cameras and telescopes. And uh, you're he all did. going to be seeing it probably. He already mentioned the Anunnaki. In the northern skies in the next three to five years. It's one of the biggest secrets in our government today. The reality and the presence it's of the Earth's planet. Poop. Our government has known about it since 1980. <laughs> Anyhow, it's real, it's there, and we're going to see it. Oh, okay. Here. Okay, crazy guy. <laughs> crazy old dude with a mullet. It's classified at the moment. Sorry, I can't oh. tell you that. Oh, okay. I'm running out of time, guys. I'm sorry. I really apologize. That's so damn much. If you motherfuckers clap for this, I'm going to be so pissed. Look, I'm going to be here all week. <laughs> hey, about that. I slides to share with you. No, my slideshow, I'm an old-fashioned old fart. I brought a tray of slides. They can't handle them back there. Because <laughs> my, my old-fashioned, you know... So I do have some transparencies, which I want to show you real quickly. Oh, finally some pictures. Including the picture of Nibiru. 
which was sent to me by a friend in, in Rome who has a connection with the Vatican Secret Service They're like, like this. That. They're homies. Homies for life with the Vatican. You're living in a hell of a time. You think, you think it's exciting, you read the stock reports, you, you see what the, the economy is in a disaster, you read the garbage that's going on in the Middle East, all of this. I'm hearing sounds, I'm, bells are ringing, you know. That's the first sign, I guess, that maybe my time is up. Get, get, get out. Anyhow, I have so much that I haven't even got close to. <laughs> okay, dude. I touched base on If you really knew shit about aliens, like if you knew some crazy shit, you'd be like panicky. You would be like, you'd be excited. You'd be like, check this out. Look at this. Look at this shit. It's real. All of it. You want to be calm like this. <laughs> a few things this afternoon, things that I feel were important. Well, I guess there's aliens out there back in the 50s when it was cool breeze outside and the spaceships, they came from the clouds. There weren't just any clouds, they were very puffy clouds. Clouds so puffy, you feel like you could just go up and grab them. <laughs> I wanted you to know that you're, doing, you're living in an incredible time. These times suck. Which you orchestrated yourself. Uh, so I want my years you, back. I want my years you back. Didn't plan your incarnation here, and your being here in the flesh is no accident. But let's get to <laughs> some of these transparencies, please. Mel, would you throw the first one up? <laughs> Are you saying Mr. Goat went to space? These space fries were good, Corbs. Corbs, these space fries were really good, Corbs. Ah. Uh, there's a picture of a book cover. I have been friends See? and close relations with a retired NASA scientist by the name of Norman Bergeron. TV? Norman has written a beautiful book called The Ringmakers of Saturn. Norman is. I should have taken a burger run. I should have gone out for a burger run. Retired NASA. Spent almost 30 years working for NASA. He wrote this book about 10 or 15 years ago, truck. and he included in it a number of photographs taken by the Voyager mission back, I think, 23 years ago. The keep that cover up there, that number one. There. That object photographed by Voyager in the rings of Saturn yeah. is about the size okay. of our moon, and it is a self-luminous object that moves around. Okay. The size of our moon. <laughs> Self-luminous. <laughs> it moves all over the damn place. Voyager photographs. This it. is the Mr. Goat of alien guys. Because Mr. Goat doesn't say jack shit either. The rings of Saturn. <clears throat> You're onto something, Joe. Norman was a hero for publishing this. Put up the next one, please. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, yeah. What you see on the right is... A ring of Saturn. Okay. What you see on the left are two objects. The one in the upper left hand corner there is another self luminous object. Well, could you tell us what it is? Place. And then the one you see, this long thing here at the end of that ring, Norman Bergman says he believed that they were making the rings. I'm convinced that they were probably mining the rings. Whoa. But I respect Norman's opinion. He, he, he's the retired NASA scientist, and he did the book. And the, the Space mine. My object at the end of that is over <laughs> 2,000 miles long. It is an artificially constructed object. The, Kelsey Grammer's old wife, the one with the irritable bowel. <laughs> Do you remember Kelsey Grammer's wife was always bitching about having an irritable bowel? Over 2,000 miles long. <laughs> it's about 500 miles in diameter. You got to look now, up Howard Stern, uh, Kelsey Grammer's wife, for a hearty chuckle. Now, you remember what, uh, oh, what it was a famous British writer that just died. Arthur Clark, thank you. I have these moments, you know, where I think they, they call it senior moments. Camille, where you, yes, Camille. Camille was always ripping ass. You forget. Arthur Clark, you, Clark used to say, if you see advanced technology to a degree that's beyond what you can understand, people consider it as magic. 
Well, this is magic, guys. Look at Hold that. Hold the next one up. Next. That object. Can you imagine a technology and a society that can build an object 2,000 miles long, for 500 crazy, miles dude. in diameter? that could either be mining or making the rings of Saturn. There it is, guys. Oh, this, this is Proof. Finally, some fucking evidence. This is an object that flew up and knocked the Soviet satellite out of orbit. I think years. Kelsey divorced Camille, probably because she couldn't stop shitting. Years ago, the Soviets sent up Finally, some proof. a first-rate satellite over to orbit Mars. And they wanted to take pictures of one of the moons. They I hope one of the pictures is him with a beer hat. Pictures of Phobos, one of the two moons of Mars. <laughs> and while they were taking pictures, this object comes up from the surface of Mars, bumps the Soviet Phobos <laughs> no, satellite, it knocks it out of orbit, and it crashes. Next Prove picture, it. please. Oh, this is a city, city on Mars. <laughs> Does this that look like a city to you guys? Infrared, and this is a city under the surface of Mars the size of <laughs> Chicago. It's generating an enormous amount of heat. The heat was picked up by the... Uh, <laughs> it's a city on Mars, guys. By the photograph. I'm sorry about the details. The nightlife there is fantastic. Those of it are not that clear, but you can see the streets. <laughs> you can it's see blocked. the streets. <laughs> this is an underground city on Mars that's fully active and filled with God knows who and what. Next picture, please. Oh, you know where they're full of. You've been to Mars a few times. There it is again. Could you move that somewhat so the bottom part of that comes up a little closer? No. That is how it is. Guys? Yes, thank you for that. What you see there is a picture of Phobos, <laughs> the, the, the moon, and I mean artificial moon of Mars. So much talk of these the alien guys love Phobos. And below it, you see an object that the Soviets said measured roughly 15 <laughs> kilometers in length. An artificial object near Phobos, the moon, 15 kilometers in length. Well, I'm sold. Next, I'm sold. Next picture, please. I'm convinced. <clears throat> that's Phobos. That's the moon, 12 miles in diameter. All right. The Soviets plan to land on it. We know Phobos exists, dude. <laughs> we don't think you're making up Phobos. Well, someone else said, no, you're not going to do that. But that is a picture of Phobos. Yes, Phobos. Which they've all concluded is an artificial satellite. What? Big secret. How so is that artificial? Own. Next picture. <laughs> you, can't, you can't just move off that. How is it artificial? Ah, uh, this photograph was taken by your own NASA Apollo 13 guys on their, <clears throat> their, their trip to the moon that didn't work out too well. These are great pictures. And many of you may have read <laughs> rumors about potato. the story, but Apollo 13 <clears throat> had a small nuclear device aboard. And oh, yeah? Been told by the guys that ran NASA that they were going to <laughs> land on the surface. Come and hey, who told you about that nuclear device? Oh, you know, the guys that run NASA. <laughs> Get out of my house. It's this small <laughs> nuclear device. And then, oh, I'm totally sold. The guys who run NASA. When they all left and came back aboard and came back, they were going to detonate it and study the reverberations of this nuclear device study the seismology of the moon because they've been convinced for some years that I the moon so. is basically hollow. It appears to be somewhat of an artificial satellite. Well, they plan to develop, de detonate this nuclear device and then the others said, no, no, you're not going to do that. Uh, get back to that picture again, please. So All much right. evidence. I wanted to show you. This picture was taken by Apollo 13. <laughs> the object you see there in the middle <clears throat> is five miles long. It's an artificial, <laughs> A person I assume, metallic focus. object, probably crammed with guys. 
And that object followed our Apollo 13 all the way to the moon, around and back. Now, whether they were trying to make sure the Apollo 13 guys got home safely or You know, the Apollo 13 guys. Whether they were the ones responsible for Apollo 13's little accident, which kept them from landing on the moon and placing that nuclear device, who knows? We may find out someday. What nuclear device? But here you have an artificial object in orbit. You know, it's just easy to say things. Nuclear device. Okay. (laughs) Way to the moon, five miles long. Now, I've spent some time aboard aircraft carriers with my kid. I've been invited several times. My my boy served on four different carriers, nuclear-powered Nemitz-class carriers. We have carriers with 5,000 men in the crew, 1,000 feet long, 150 aircraft, you know, there's snack bars, dining rooms, accommodations, this and that. <laughs> right. Can you imagine the accommodations on an object? Are you talking about snack bars on a spaceship? Are you really going to start talking about snack bars on spaceships? I like to think that, you know, there's McDonald's, bowling alleys. <laughs> they don't have McDonald's on spaceships. What? I'm sure they have a fairly good life out there. <laughs> Anyhow, aboard an object five miles long. Next slide, let's move along here. I bet you they even have a tennis court, coach. Next one, please. <laughs> second photograph. Uh, That's same, same objects, but a second photo in the sequence. Apollo 13. That's the big mother. And I, I use that, no, no pun intended. There are other objects out there. There's, there's a disc-shaped object, and then there's the other object. Then above it is the moon out there. A but there's that one big object out there. I'm sure they got a crew of hundreds. Yeah, I, I bet you they have at least one pole. Maybe a couple of thousand. In five miles, you can put a lot of, you know, good stuff out there. We know this about them. Next slide. Oh, you know they have a, a TJ Maxx on there. We know that they're almost like us. They're very much like us. Oh, God. A space Listen, open guys, junk? we're going to have to stop. Take it down, please. Turn the thing off. I'm out of time. Oh, good. Get out. Out. Go on, get. Tried. Take your slides and go on and get. In the time I had to do two things to impress upon you the reality of the extraterrestrial presence. The ones I... (laughs) He finally starts talking about aliens the last five minutes. ...as the others. I hate the term alien. I hate the term UFO. There are no UFOs. We've known what they are for years and years and years. I just call them space-gers. Some of them are ours. Some of them are theirs. There are no unidentified flying objects out there. They're all identified. That's I tried to impress was. upon you the seriousness of it, the it seriousness through. of the cover up and the lies they've been telling you. <laughs> the importance of why you need to know as much as you can know. And this guy's a pro, dude. Presented with the material. Because, damn it, you all deserve the truth. You have a right to know, and you have a need to know. Because you are the people that this whole damn thing is all about. (laughs) Now, and this is the best damn crowd I ever spoke to. They always got to say that. They're in our midst. (laughs) That's an understatement. When I came in, I arrived yesterday, I've been running around here all day. There's an old friend <laughs> sitting in the audience out here who I've known for years. He's Stephen currently Kelly. with Defense Intelligence Agency. Always, He's all of them work with defense up agencies. To years, probably gonna retire very soon. And I've, sent, I've met him many times, we've shared a lot of information. There is another young man in the audience here who I will not point to, because I can't see a damn thing with those lights. You did this when we started, asshole. (laughs) From National Security Agency. And he and my old friend were not aware of the other one being present here. 
But the one that's most redeeming and most exciting for me is there is a couple here who look like they're in the mid 40s. They look like a husband and wife. <clears throat> uh -oh. Nice looking people. Very he wants to nice, fuck them both. Nicely appearance. As I said, they're. And then they had a very uh, uh, pleasant fragrance. <laughs> it's like a husband and wife. They're sitting together. All right. All right. Neither one of them were born on this planet. What? Guys, they're in your midst. <laughs> He ends the alien talk with saying there's a couple that was born in space. <laughs> but he won't tell you who they are, though, because that would ruin the fun. There's two aliens in the crowd, guys. <laughs> As we speak, there's two aliens attending the International UFO Congress. If you have dinner down here somewhere, you could be... If you have dinner down here somewhere, you could be sitting next to one of them. There are two of them in the audience this afternoon, and I want to take salute you. They're Whoa. nice folks. They were there the whole They're time. In the most respects, as you and I are. They're all over the damn place. They're in our midst, and they are family. We're related. This guy was the guy who said he knows too much, and then proceeded to say nothing for an hour. He quit speaking because he knew too much. But then he doesn't say anything. To them because they were the ones that had a hand. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He said as, nothing. As a hybrid race. And started by saying he knows too much. A hundred thousand years ago. And that hybridization is still underway. It's still happening. Even as we sit here and speak. It hasn't stopped. It's underway. There are lots of guys here from different places. They have different agendas. Some of them are nice folks, and some of them are not. Oh, shit. As I said, they have different agendas. Guys, I hate to, t I hate to warn everyone here, but this room is filled with space -ers. But we're not in any great fear because the nice folks are going to damn well insist and ensure that we are allowed <laughs> what about the patents? this program underway and that we're going to survive and keep this beautiful, blessed little planet going the way it's been going. We're making some progress. But they're all around. And you should, I think, feel a, se a sense of gratitude and satisfaction to Shut know up. that some of them Dead. are good folks. It's time to go, dude. And it's they care about you. It's time to go. And then the other thing I want to say is I learned and there is a God, and that each and every one of you is an immortal soul who will live forever. And you've been here before, and you probably will come back again. And if <laughs> That's you don't right. Take care, here Again, on this particular planet, <laughs> maybe we can meet each other, and our paths will cross if we reincarnate somewhere else. Because this program <laughs> take, <laughs> take is care, a Dean. universal program. Have a good one. In scope. And it's never ending, and it's something <laughs> absolutely glorious to find out when you realize the truth of that. I'll see you later, Dean. Now, I'm sorry. I apologize. I, I you, you really through. should. You owe everyone, you owe everyone here, and everyone who watched this live an apology. Much. I'm mean, long-winded. I want to say something in closing. <laughs> I want to say, I want to try to communicate to you. Uh oh, here we go. How the much you people have meant to me over the years. Oh, fuck you. You did this in the beginning. I want you to know how much you all have meant to me. I love you. I love every single one of you. <laughs> Dean's had some, uh, some natty daddies before all this. Over the years. <laughs> your support, your encouragement, and your warmth is only... The one thing that's kept me going. Say what you want, Dean, but you're too old. You're not, you're not getting laid after this. It ain't the 70s anymore. I want you to know... <laughs> I want you to know how grateful I am to each and every one of you. Shut up, Dean. You are friends. You wasted everyone's time, you fucking old Giamo. jerk. You said I nothing. Love you all. Good night. I'll eat a bag of shit, Dean. You can't start cr almost crying after you said absolutely jack.
Shit, I'm angry right now, Dean. You're lucky you're dead. <laughs> I'm going to dig you up and find some alien thing to bring you back to life and then kill you again. <laughs> you fucking cocksucker. <laughs> you suck. You wasted everyone's time. <laughs> fucking asshole. Guys, I'm sorry. I wasted over an hour of your time. <laughs> but don't worry. If you want, we can do it again next Monday. <laughs> that was awful, guys. But hey, next week, I think I got one uh, about uh, reptilians and how everything started going wrong after an anime convention. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Maybe we'll watch that one next week. But guys... <laughs> 